Hi, I'm Ksenia and welcome to Guiding Star Astrology. I'm your Astro Weather Girl here with this week's Astro Weather Report. I'm going to show you how the stars are going to affect your life this week. In my videos, I use both Vedic and traditional Western techniques with tropical astrology, not sidereal astrology. I also use the traditional system of whole sign astrology for my analysis. You can use this video to the best of your advantage by listening to the introduction to understand what the week holds for you and then going to the timestamps for your sun, moon and rising sign to get a more personalized forecast for the week ahead. Astrology is not designed to scare you. It's designed to give you information so that you know what the good and the challenging energies in the week ahead will be and you can therefore consciously work with them to the best of your advantage. Remember, knowledge is power. Now there are scammers about and so if you should receive a message from me on any platform requesting your money for a reading, know that it is a scam. Report them immediately. And now settle in and let's see what the astral skies have in store for the week ahead. Well, my friends, what an exciting week we have ahead of us astrologically. I'm very uh, keen to share with you what's coming up. Before I do, though, I want to just let you know that this is the final week, the last chance you've got to enroll mid-year for the Royal Stars Academy with $100 off. I don't often offer uh, this bargain price, um, $100 off either the introductory level or the intermediate level. Either way, it's a bargain and come and join me and study astrology. Get certified if you would like to. Something that amuses me is, is hearing people say or watching the comments and seeing people say, I don't need to get, go to the Royal Stars Academy because I learn all I need to know about astrology off YouTube. And to me, that's like, <laughs> it's like learning to speak English by reading Dr. Seuss books. There is, you're never going to be able to read Shakespeare if all you know is Dr. Seuss. So that's like learning astrology on YouTube. There's just so much more that is not revealed by many of the teachers on YouTube. They will show you the basics, but the real meaty stuff, you've got to go to a mentor or an instructional course, uh, some kind of advanced learning if you really want to do good, proper astrology. So come join me at the Royal Stars Academy, get certified and get the meaty Shakespeare of astrology. Also, my friends, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to win a solar return report for the month of July. Leave a comment in the comment section to let me know that you've done so. Um, and the, the June winner of a solar return report is, big drum roll, I've got to read this, um, Corinne Dawn Lewis 9478 is the comment that won the solar return report for the month of june so once again corinne c-o-r-i-n-n-e-d-a-w-n dawn lewis l-e-w-i-s 9478 if you're watching corinne dawn lewis 9478 please contact me through the contact form on my website links in the description below let me know your email and i will chase you up for a solar return report lucky you and remember my friends if you would like to go into the draw to win a solar return report for july you've just got to like share subscribe and leave a comment in the comment section to let me know you've done so um, a number of people subscribe and then unsubscribe um, i can see that so you know if you do that to win to go into the draw to win and you unsubscribe well you don't you don't win the report that you won't be in the draw to win you've got to be a subscriber to win you've got to be in it to win it as they say let's move to the astrology uh, this week's energy focus this is a little review of the energies playing out this week but the big one that we're going to be under the impact of for the next six months or five months to six months is Neptune retrograde Neptune is here in Pisces I'm going to put an R for retrograde by Neptune Neptune goes retrograde on the 1st of July in Australia it will be the 30th of June in some other parts of the world and he's going to remain retrograde until the 6th in uh, in the sort of the North well the Americas or the 7th in other parts of the world of December so 1st of July 30th of June he's turning retrograde 
and then he will turn direct again in about five months time the 6th or the 7th of December depending on where you are in the world now about 40 percent of human beings on the planet have Neptune retrograde in their natal charts this is a familiar energy I have Neptune retrograde in my chart plus Neptune spends about five months of every single year in retrograde motion this energy is very familiar to us it's comfortable to us it's not like a mercury retrograde it's not like a venus retrograde where it's unusual and less people have that in their natal chart this one is familiar so don't be too perturbed by this but this is what we're going to focus on for the all signs breakdown we're going to be looking at well what might neptune retrograde be bringing us in the next three to uh, sorry five to six months Neptune is misty. That is the word for Neptune energy. Neptune is misty astronomically and astrologically. So when this giant blue ball of gas and liquid goes retrograde, it is at its closest proximity to us here on Earth and therefore we see its influence amplified to we small energy receptors of Earthlings that we are. So what does this then express as in our communities, in our personal lives, in our families? How do we feel the Neptune energy? Well, Neptune is a very hard planet to get a grasp on, but I'm going to do my best to share how it, you might notice Neptune's retrograde influence in your life. Vagueness. Vagueness is the first word, we, key word we want to use. Our vagueness can increase. We might lose the usual clarity with which we can manifest our longings we don't really know what we want anymore we thought we wanted to achieve this or we thought we wanted to go on a holiday here or we felt like this would be a good thing for our family to do and then Neptune turns retrograde and we're like I'm not really sure about that anymore I don't know that that's the best thing for us or that's the wisest course of action we get misty we get vague about our longings in the material realm that's the first influence it can also make us more sensitive more sensitive to our world around us to the things people say sensitive to drugs and alcohol um, so we, we need to be very careful about escapist practices while Neptune is retrograde things like drugs and alcohol of the negative variety because it won't take as much alcohol it won't take as much drugs to work so you know you might usually have maybe three glasses of wine in the evening and you barely notice a difference lucky you <laughs> all it takes is half a glass for me um let's say you have three glasses of alcohol and you barely notice a difference while neptune is direct well when neptune goes retrograde oh my god you might not be fit to drive there's a different effect because neptune governs these addictive practices and they become more potent because neptune is closer to the earth its energy as you can see the Sun is moving around to oppose Neptune down here over the next five months so therefore we earthlings in the middle are getting the direct influence the direct um, magnetism or the direct um, energetic force of Neptune on us with no interference from our solar Sun uh, in in, uh, in relationship to that because the Sun's around the other side of the earth so that's why the intensity is greater when Neptune is retrograde now another thing that can happen is that fears and phobias that might not usually be in our consciousness can arise during Neptune retrograde but also so can our psychic intuition and our connection to the astral plane can rise up as well so good things difficult things challenging things you might yeah like I said fears and phobias things that you didn't think were a bother become a bother um, but also you might be getting messages from the divine you know psychic downloads uh, just you know constant aha synchronicities all the time um, another thing that can happen with a Neptune retrograde season is you might have a sort of a misplaced compassion this can lead to martyrdom like you feel sorry for someone so you go out of your way to help them and they just exploit you they take advantage of you you're disappointed with the outcome of that circumstance martyrdom is a Neptune energy and we often see people martyring themselves maybe for the greater good maybe for another person maybe for a child maybe for a cause you got to be careful of martyrdom and misplaced compassion during Neptune retrograde now on the plus side during Nep Neptune retrograde if you are generally a spiritually inclined person or a creative person or something of a mystical soul by nature 
Your time has come when Neptune is in its retrograde phase because the creative juices are flowing now. The inspiration is in abundance. The potential spiritual bliss is closer than you dreamed. Just reach out for it and claim it as yours during Neptune retrograde. It's so much more at hand thanks to Neptune's close proximity to the Earth. This is a time that brings karmic repercussions and soul growth to us all every year. So enjoy it. Enjoy what it brings, even if you can't quite get a grasp on what it's actually doing in your life. Remember, this influence is active for the next five to six months. So enjoy as best you can. Now that is happening. <coughs> pardon me. That's happening on the 1st of July. Also on the 1st of July, we have the sun in a conjunction here with Mercury. Cha-ching! both at the same degree now I have just shown you here this is happening um, on the 1st of July I've just shown you here that the Sun is here Mercury is here and of course this um, logo is representing the earth in the middle that is not entirely accurate this is not Mercury Kazemi that's what Mercury Kazemi is when the Mercury is closer to the earth this is not Mercury Kazemi what's going on right now is that the sun is sitting between Mercury and the Earth. And therefore Mercury, little old Mercury over here, Mercury is combust. It's invisible to us. We cannot see him on the Earth because he's behind the sun. His energy is lost in the rays of the sun. What does this mean? During these, this period, while Mercury is in this strongly combust state, and this lasts for actually a few weeks, it's been in this state for a few weeks and will continue to be so, um, but it's the, the exact conjunction at degree occurs on the 1st of July. So we might lose our usual sense of humour, our wittiness, our sociability under this influence. Our usual ability to communicate can be kind of burnt up by the sun. Mercury's communication, the sun burns whatever it touches. We might feel restless and uncomfortable with, with our lives for no apparent reason during this period for the next couple of weeks. But look, don't fret. This is actually a wonderful transit because it represents the halfway point of the Mercury cycle and the culmination of whatever was unfolding for you during the Mercury retrograde period that we recently went through. So think back to the video I did on Mercury retrograde and what was going on in your life then, what was coming up for you. Well, it's, it's reaching its ending point. It's reaching its culmination point now. Remember, this was in the sign of Taurus from the 21st of April to the 14th of May. So that was when we were having Mercury retrograde. What was going on for you in those dates? And what was Mercury affecting for you in the sign of Taurus in your chart? For those who are familiar with astrology, you'll be able to figure that out. So if you want to learn about that kind of thing, come join me at the Royal Stars Academy and learn what Taurus rules for you personally in your chart. Think about that. Um, where were you during those days? What was significant in your life then when Mercury was retrograde? That was the beginning of the cycle. What messages, and this was uh, the actual exact beginning of the cycle was the 2nd of May, actually, when we had a Kazemi Mercury. Not a combust Mercury, a Kazemi Mercury. That's when the cycle began. What was happening on the 2nd of May particularly? What messages did Mercury retrograde bring you then? There should have been some follow-up um, to the, whatever was occurring around the 2nd of May that's happened over the intervening time. People might have been coming back into your life at, um, since then. There might be a rejigging of what was not working at that time in your life. There might have been an adjusting of social expectations or a reinvigorating of what had become worn out in some way. And it should be, this is, the, this is what's known as Promethean retrograde period um, and Promethean direct cycle. It's now concluded and we begin this brand new phase of Mercury energy. So, yes, Mercury is combust, but it's also a day of completion of a cycle. So that's something to be celebrated as we move into a new cycle of Mercury energy, something I'm always pleased to welcome into my life. I talk about this more when I do Mercury retrograde videos and I do have a video all about the Promethean retrograde uh, and direct cycle on my Patreon page. If you would like to understand Promethean theory with Mercury better, simply join my Patreon page. The video is there waiting for you to explore along with many other videos all about astrology that you are going to love. 
Uh, okay, what else is happening this week? We have on the July the 3rd, we have Venus square to Uranus. So here is Venus here in Leo squaring Uranus down here in Taurus. So that's the only drawing on the board I'm required to do this week because this is the only full to the degree aspect that is forming. How's your love life? No matter what state it's in, this aspect, Uranus squared to Venus, can really stir the pot because we want freedom. We want excitement, not boredom and the same old, same old, same old in our relationships. Sometimes if things have been a little testy in a relationship, this combo can be one that really stokes that angry fire. For some people who've got other things happening in their personal chart, it might actually indicate a separation occurs or... Um, time apart occurs from a relationship that's become too fractious. If you are a couple though that likes experimentation, that likes playfulness together, that enjoys change and regularly changes up their lifestyle, if you're a couple that is very open-minded about the nature of your relationship then you have nothing to fear from this transit. It can actually enhance your sense of connection with your partner during this time. So if you're in that sort of relationship, thumbs up for you. And if you're single going into this day, 3rd of July, um, then, you know, if you're single and loving it, then this is a, this rather autonomous energy, Uranus is very autonomous, is going to fill your life with interesting people to meet, unusual things to experience, quirky events that take place that will leave you feeling happy and, um, and more joyful. Venus is the things that, that give us pleasure. So quirky, interesting things that bring you pleasure can come your way if you are single and not interested in a relationship. So enjoy what this um, aspect might bring you. Then also on the 3rd of July, when this is unfolding, we're also having a full moon in Capricorn. Sun will be opposite full moon. Not long after we have the exact end of the Promethean Mercury retrograde phase, two days later. So if you want to know more about this, A, you'll get a video on Promethean Retrograde that's available to all my Patreon members, um, but I will also this week be doing a video on the breakdown of the full moon in Capricorn at 11 degrees for all my Patreon members. If you're interested in this fabulous, and it is fabulous, this new this full moon rather, if you're interested in this fabulous full moon energy and how it will be affecting you personally, sign up to my Patreon page, all you pay is $5 a month to get two moon reports every month and it's free um they're all, well it's not free you pay five dollars a month to get three videos two moon reports and an educational video on astrology and how it applies to you plus lots of gifts and meditations and catch-ups and coffee chats and things like that that are available to my patreon family so come join me find out all about this month's full moon in capricorn my friends so with that in mind, let's move on now. Let's take a look at our All Signs Breakdown. We are looking at Neptune and we're looking at Neptune Retrograde for the next five months and what it's going to bring us. Remember I spoke about this a moment ago. Uh, vagueness is what it can bring. Sensitivity to our surroundings and our experiences. Fears, paranoias, martyrdom, heightened creativity and inspiration. Uh, what may unfold. So let's start with Pisces because, of course, Neptune's turning retrograde in its own rulership, actually, in its sign in modern rulership, Pisces. So what does this mean for Pisces rising people? Well, Neptune's going retrograde in the first house. This means Pisces people are going to need to focus for the next five months on putting good boundaries in place, on being able to say enough is enough, I'm, I'm saying no and my no means no, uh, I will not let anyone cross the line. I'll not let anyone take advantage of me. I'm going to avoid martyring myself. Pisces, this could be challenging for you because unfortunately Pisces tends towards a Neptunian expression. Uh, it's ruled in modern astrology, as I said, by Neptune. So we do tend to martyr ourselves in the shadow expression of our sign, our rising sign Pisces. We might martyr ourselves for our children or our partner or our job. Be careful of that. Put boundaries in place. Say no is no and I'm going to take care of myself and honor myself. You might need to be very strict about that sort of thing. Some Pisces people might have thought their ambitions were X, Y, Z. Um, they were heading in this direction. Life must, must look like this ideal 
And then Neptune turns retrograde in their first house and they're like, hang on a minute, I'm not sure that is me. I'm not sure that is where I'm heading. I'm not sure that ideal is what I actually truly want. There can be some confusion around who you are and your place in the world and um, where you're heading, what you're doing. Your, your journey in this incarnation can become a bit misty, a bit foggy with Neptune turning retrograde. This is also the house of survival, our main reason for incarnation. So it's a very personal influence, Neptune turning retrograde. You might have fears or paranoias about survival. How am I going to make ends meet? How, you know, how am I going to heat my house? How am I going to put bread on the table? You know, fears and paranoias, they might be completely unfounded with Neptune retrograding in the first house, the house of survival. Okay, so remember when you're starting to freak out and, you know, get anxious about something, oh, Neptune's retrograde in my first house. Is this the truth? Is, it, is there really a threat that I'm not going to be able to feed my family? Is there really a threat that I can't keep the house warm? Or am I digging into fears and paranoia about my ability to survive on the planet? Do some self-assessment or some journaling when those times arise, Pisces, to help get you through this period. This is also uh, a house, in the in most blessed sense, a house of initiating new things. And of course, when Neptune energy is amplified, it means you might be come up with all these creative, wondrous ideas, a new poem, a new film, uh, new costuming that you might design for something. Um, you will be inundated with inspiration from the divine. Creativity just floods in to initiate something new in your life. So if you're entrepreneurial, you might come up with all these wonderful money-making ideas and entrepreneurial ideas over the next five months. Very empowered in that sense because Neptune will be giving you heightened creativity in the house of entrepreneurism, in the house of initiation of new things, Pisces. Very exciting. Um, this is also the house of the first impressions with, that we give, the aura that we have and the energy that we have. So we might have a, a more mystical energy about us. People might meet us and think, oh my goodness, they're sort of like on another plane. They're very angelic. Um, they're very mystical kind of a person. I, I get the sense that they're quite ethereal and fairy-like, um, you know, pixie-like. That might be the energy that you're giving because of the heightened expression of Neptune in the house of your aura, you personally, your body. So that can also be another uh, expression through the physical and the aura, the energy that you carry. Uh, and there's something finally that I also wanted to mention here, um, a heightened sensitivity. Your body might be more sensitive during this time. So uh, remember my beautiful Pisces friends to do all you can to keep you know, the vitamins and minerals up, uh, eat healthy, flush the body regularly to get rid of toxins because Neptune can be very toxic if it's uh, at a high influence. So flush the body, you know, do some, do like monthly juice fasts. I talk about this in my full moon and new moon reports when the best times to do those things are. I would focus on doing those in the next five months because Neptune retrograde is going to amplify that sensitivity to toxins, sensitivity to bodily health and bodily functions. Take care of your house, health, get plenty of rest. If you're not coping, if you're stressed, if you're anxious, make sure you take time out for the self, rest, relax, make those things a focal point over the next five months. Schedule them into your day so that you can get the best out of the next five months with Neptune retrograding in the first house. Now, before we move on, my Pisces friends, I want to just mention there's one more week for you to make the most of my $100 off offer for mid-year enrollment in the Royal Stars Academy to become a certified astrologer or to study astrology in depth with me. Many people say that uh, they can learn all they need to know about astrology by watching YouTube. It's not true. It's like reading Dr. Seuss and thinking you know Shakespeare. Two different things, two polaric extremes. YouTube is not enough there's so much more meatiness most astrologers will give you a taste online but they want you to come and learn from them or study books or whatever um, and go more in depth so they'll only give you the surface level things if you want to go deep with astrology you can't get it off YouTube so come and join me at the Royal Stars Academy if you really want to know meaty in-depth full-on astrology don't forget also to visit my Patreon family for fabulous full moon energy and how it will be affecting you personally. Links to all these things are in the description below, my beautiful friends. Thank you, Pisces. All right, Aries rising, Aries sun and Aries moon people is seeing the influence of Neptune turning retrograde in your 12th 
house for the next five months. My Aries friends, this is a placement that might indicate that over the next five months, coping with reality might be more difficult. It might be more difficult for you to get a full grasp on what's really going on in the world at large and in your own personal life. You might be very vague about the, the realities of life. You might want to escape from the realities of life that you're experiencing like oh this financial pressure is too much or the the pressure of my family is too much or I can't cope with this particular aspect of my work anymore it's like the pressure cooker increases it's not really increasing but your ability to cope changes with Neptune retrograde so it feels like there's more pressure it feels like that things have got harder so be forewarned forearmed about this it can be a time of feeling very vague about how do I cope? How do I manage? How do, how do I handle reality? Don't be afraid to take time out. In fact, it's essential. Schedule it into your month for the next five months. Every month I'm going to you know, take a weekend away or I'm going to go visit my friend at the ocean or whatever it happens to be. Take time out regularly to cope with Neptune retrograde, my friends. You might find that the ancestors you have on the other side, the angels and the higher beings are trying to communicate with you. This is a house of communication with the divine. And of course, um, we're heightened in our sensitivity when Neptune is retrograde, as I said in the introduction. So the you know you might get visions of grand, great grandma who passed away or you might get a message in your sleep that is very very meaningful some dreams that have meaning to you so Aries do take note of of these messages that you're getting from the divine these goosebump moments these light bulb aha moments because you have a heightened sensitivity and an ability to tap into the psychic realms in a manner that isn't quite so strong when Neptune is direct Neptune direct is more suited to earthly life if you like but Neptune retrograde is very like ultra spiritual like I said in the introduction because Neptune is has a more direct energetic influence upon the earth when it is retrograde so there might be um, channelings that come through visions that come through intuitive feelings forebodings signs omens pay attention over the next five months my Aries friends um, there could be some fears or paranoias that come up. If they do, it's likely that it's a past life issue. And I would encourage you to do some past life clearing. Whether you do energy healing, whether you get a past life regression with Robin or Natasha on my, uh, on my website, um, these are great approaches that you can undertake to help clear the karmic energy. Neptune retrograde is very karmic and can bring up these paranoias that are uh, from our past lives we don't even know where this fear of heights is suddenly coming from or this worry about the rug being pulled out from underneath us is coming from because it's not usually there Neptune retrograde in the 12th house of past lives can bring it up for you to deal with heal clear and move on my friends so that's another thing be careful of martyring yourself as well it's like this is the house of martyrdom Neptune is the planet of martyrdom uh, in the sign of martyrdom just be careful about overgiving uh, in general to not so much an individual here but more to the world now another thing I would mention because of Neptune's close proximity to the earth your prayers can be heard this is a time for prayer meditation um, di deep diving into connection with the divine whether that's going into trance or channeling or something like that um, it is a time for communicating with your higher self and the divine this is what I want this is what I need this is my wishes this is my desires for oneness on the earth for, f for an ideal utopian life this is what I want so imagine fantasize daydream pray do these things that take you into connection with the divine there is a heightened spiritual component to this Neptune retrograde period my Aries friends also your creativity is likely to be really amped up so if you're in a create if you're in a creative profession you might have your best work exhibiting now you might be sort of getting that download that helps you write that fantasy novel or uh, produce that wonderful film so listen to spirit act on the promptings that you're getting regarding creativity and spirituality uh, it, you can't go wrong uh, I want to mention before I move on my Aries friends that the Royal Stars Academy has only one week left for you to enroll mid-year at $100 off either the introductory level or the intermediate level both are $100 off it is time 
to grab that opportunity um, one more week only. And I just want to mention so many people say, oh, I can learn all I need to know about astrology by watching YouTube. Well, that is like saying I can learn Shakespearean English by reading Dr. Seuss. It's BS. You actually need meatiness to understand astrology and you're not going to get it on YouTube because all the astrologers who talk on YouTube, they're giving you the surface level stuff including me. I'm not giving you the meaty goodness that I save for my Royal Stars Academy friends. So do come join me at the Royal Stars Academy if you really want to go in depth and know true ancient astrology. Come join me. And don't forget to visit my Patreon family for this fabulous upcoming full moon energy this week and how it has affected you and will be affecting you at a personal level. Thank you, Aries. All right, Taurus rising, Taurus sun, Taurus moon, friends. Here we are, my, my beautiful Taurians, my beautiful bulls. <laughs> this is um, the energy of Neptune turning retrograde in the 11th house. And this is where you'll probably find over the next five months while Neptune is retrograde that you'll be very attracted to people who seem like your ideal type of person, not relationally necessarily. But friendship-wise, oh, they are so inspirational, or they are—they've just got it all together, or they seem like they—they're they're the real deal, and I—I'm so attracted to their the idealistic image of this person. You might even be attracted to creating friendships with dreamers, and worst-case scenario, you might be attracted to people to create friendships with people who are addicted. You might be martyring yourself for friends who are of the addictive, sort of deceptive variety. So do be careful. Do your due diligence about any new friendships that you form, any new connections that you make. This is um, a time, Neptune retrograde, when you might network with people who promise you the world, oh yeah, I know this person and I can set you up with a meeting with this fabulous person who's going to change your life. And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it all crumbles like castles in the air. You know, they, it's not real. It's smoke and mirrors. Okay, so just be careful of that during Neptune retrograde period when you're networking and connecting with other people. Take everything with a grain of salt. Don't discard anything, of course, but uh, don't put your heart and soul into something thinking it's going to be the be-all, end-all. Tread with caution. Uh, this is a house of where we can be profitable and gainful. Now, just again on this topic, be very careful. Um, about what you get involved in in terms of achieving profitability and gainfulness because this energy Neptune retrograde can make you a little bit vague or can make the approach to achieving profitability and gainfulness very vague how do I go about doing this I have this vision that if I did this I could achieve this but how do I get there I don't really know I'm a bit lost about how to make it happen so that's another influence that this can actually bring heightened sensitivity occurs when Neptune is retrograde and of course Friendships are seen through the 11th house. So you might be very sensitive to what your friends say. You know, they might say something. Uh, you might hear a rumor that they're spreading behind your back. And you might be like, what the, you know, and it could really impact friendships and connections because, you know, that you're sensitive to what's being said. And Neptune rules gossip, retrogrades, closer to the earth. It's more potent. You might, your friends might be gossiping about you or speaking about you behind your back. Not always the best um, situation so just be careful about that as well you might have some fears and paranoias regarding um, maybe you know your the stock market is seen through the 11th house or one of the houses that the stock market relates to you might have some fears and paranoias if you've got stocks and investing in stocks um, do this could be a time when things got, get a little bit shaky regarding that or you might be disappointed or disillusioned with the stock investments that you make same goes for the wealth that you generate from what you're contributing to the world like the wealth you get from your career or your um, reputation or your aspirations things could be a little bit disillusional there you, you're expecting you launch a big course and you're expecting to get a lot of response and you know maybe you get dribs and drabs instead and there's disappointment. Neptune uh, creates um, yes fears and paranoias. Neptune also creates idealism that goes unfulfilled when it's uh, sometimes. Sometimes Neptune is magical and creates a, a magical response um, to situations like that. Uh, but when it's retrograde the energy is just a little bit overwhelming and more potent in, in its negativity 
I've got to say, my observation, I mean, I hear a lot of astrologers talk about the magic of Neptune, and Neptune can be magical, usually over a long period of time, though, not in an instantaneous period of time. Some of us go looking for magical miracles that happen in an instant, like waving a magic wand, poof, suddenly you're all dressed for the ball. No, Neptune is misty and foggy, and it's ma it's magical, mystical uh, miracles, MMM, comes creeping in slowly and infiltratingly you don't notice it. it's not like a big shock and so what I'm saying here is that Neptune coming in and you know if you're expecting Neptune to bring you big wealth from your contribution to the world in a miraculous way it doesn't happen like that what is more likely to happen suddenly and unexpectedly and instantly with Neptune is a disappointment oh my gosh I trusted this person to give me the rewards that I needed. I trusted my boss to pay me fairly. And now I'm disillusioned. I had this ideal. I had this expectation. And now it comes crumbling down. Neptune retrograde can work a bit more like that. Now, sorry to be sort of a negative Nancy here. Um, but that is the, the shadow energy of Neptune. Now, there's positive as well. Neptune retrograde does not mean everything's going to hell in a handbasket. Neptune can bring creative, uplifting spiritual experiences that you share with your friends. Neptune retrograde can bring you the chance to make big um, rewards and gains, achieve a lot of gainfulness from spiritual work. If you're in spiritual work, like, you know, maybe you're a, a yoga teacher or maybe you teach, you know, um, music therapy or something like that um, Neptune can bring you big rewards and gains when he goes retrograde if you're a poet if you're a filmmaker if you do anything that is Neptunian if you do anything that is creative spiritual if you do anything that involves holidays and escaping and massage that you know takes people out of their ordinary everyday humdrumness into something beautiful something tranquil like we did just recently at our solstice event solstice celebration that can be very profitable and gainful for you while Neptune is retrograde because there's an increase in the positive Neptune energy running through the 11th house of rewards and gains so if you can direct your energy there you'll get all the benefit of Neptune in the 11th house um, so yes focus on that heightened creativity inspiration spirituality and escaping in healthy ways you can be rewarded you can create deeper friendships more blessing um, and even new dreams and goals can emerge from um, getting involved in sort of meditation groups or um, that kind of thing. In fact, our solstice event that we ran was so beautiful. I just have to share with you, my Taurus friends, because so many people received inspiration for their future. They got messages from the divine through meditating as a group um, and through focusing on their future, 11th house, in a very spiritual manner, Neptune in um, the uh, the sign of Pisces uh, going retrograde. Now it hasn't gone retrograde yet when the solstice event we just did occurred, but a lot of people had strong Taurus energy, um, Taurus, particularly Taurus rising in their chart that this was an influence for. It's just so fascinating to see how this stuff works. So that's it in a nutshell, how you can focus on the next five months and use Neptune retrograde to the best of your advantage, my friends. Now, don't forget that there is one more week to make the most of my discounted mid-year enrollment for the Royal Stars Academy. It's $100 off either the intermediate level or the introductory level. Come and join me and learn to do deep, meaty true astrology a lot of people on youtube will say uh, sorry a lot of people leave comments and things saying oh i can learn all the astrology i need off youtube well if you want to do dr seuss level astrology then that's fine but if you want to do shakespeare level astrology you're going to need a course you're going to need a mentor you're going to need a tutor or a teacher that can take you far deeper than you're going to get off what astrologers give as just a small snippet of their knowledge on youtube myself included i only give you the cream off the top but there is so much more to what is underneath and deep and meaty in astrology it's like the tip of the iceberg is what you'll get on youtube so come and learn shakespearean level astrology with me at the royal stars academy if you really want to do good astrology also don't forget to visit my patreon family this week for um, my fabulous full moon report for all signs and how it's going to affect you personally thank you taurus Gemini, Gemini rising, Gemini sun and Gemini moon people. Well, the energy 
this month sorry for the next five months of Neptune retrograde is occurring in your angular and therefore very important 10th house one of the ways this energy can manifest for you my Gemini friends is that you might really desire to be creative and to bring creativity into what you offer to the world in some way or bring spirituality somehow into the world but you're not quite clear how to make it happen how to make it real now I, I'll use myself as, as an example here because I have Neptune retrograde in the 10th house natally and for you I, I didn't really embark on my public career astrology until I was in my 40s it took that long because I knew I wanted to do something meaningful I do I knew I wanted to do something with spirituality that was up, uplifting to people but I had no idea how to make it happen through the circumstances in how I was raised and um, and the circumstances of my life through my 20s and 30s it didn't occur to me how to live my purpose until I was in my 40s and that's what can be happening for you in the next five months you know you want to do something significant and meaningful you know you want to bring creativity into your career in some way but how do you make it happen it can be a little bit mm, scratching the head I don't really know pray for guidance Pray that the door, the right doors will open and the right doors will shut to take you where you need to go. That's one approach here. But again, um, you might be feeling a little bit unclear about how to make the creativity and the flourishing in your career happen for the next five months. Just trust the divine. Trust that it's leading you in the right direction and go with the flow is the best approach. Trust in divine timing, my Gemini friends. So this is a placement, Neptune retrograde in the 10th house, where we can feel, like I said, a bit vague about what we want. Um, there can also be heightened sensitivity. Now, if you're dealing with authority figures and they're critical of you, you're going to be very sensitive to that. If you're getting sort of clamped down on by the government, my Gemini friends, if you're feeling uh, that there's some maybe some legal matters, you might feel like your boss is riding your back, you know, and you're going to be very sensitive to those things. Have some strategies at your beck and call to deal with this in the best way possible you know maybe you you need to plan to have you know uh, after work every day I'm gonna to go to the gym and let off steam just to cope over the next five months because I know my boss is gonna be riding my back things might get um, yeah we just might be sensitive you might your boss might not be riding your back any more so than usual but you might be more sensitized to it because Neptune is retrograde in your 10th house some of you Gemini people might be experiencing fears and paranoias over the next five months about your reputation in the world. So something might happen that triggers that for you. Somebody says something, Neptune is gossip, somebody's talking about you behind their back. Um, Neptune in the 10th house also, it can, by, by transit in this case, it can be that maybe for the last um, 12 years that Neptune's been in this position, people might have seen you in a certain light they might have been under an illusion about who you are and that can be amplified while Neptune is retrograde they might think oh they're the most angelic person in the world um, in secretly you're doing dirty deals behind you know, closed doors kind of thing but the image you're giving to the world is this oh, I'm angelic and spiritual and la 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 love and light all that stuff when, see, when the truth is very, very different, perhaps. I'm using this as an example. I'm not saying people watching this are like this. And then Neptune goes retrograde and it's even amped up further. It's like you wear a mask. The public can't quite see exactly who you are or understand exactly who you are. There's a mistiness. And Neptune retrograde increases that illusion of who you are. So you might find people hear about you or you know they've heard about you on the grapevine or something like that and then you meet them and they're like hang on you're nothing like what I thought you would be I'm so shocked that might come up your reputation and Neptune retrograde might lead to people being disappointed in you disillusioned by you um, having a sense of uh, confusion about who you really are can be another thing Gemini so uh, your reputation can be a bit misty and foggy to other people that's that's one thing um, you might also find that you might have to martyr yourself in some way over the next five months uh, to serve your leadership responsibilities or your social obligations or for something to do with career you might have to sacrifice yourself Neptune retrograde is self-sacrifice that's why the whole Neptune and Pisces is associated with the Christianity movement Jesus being the ultimate avatar of self-sacrifice 
attached. So there might be a, uh, a calling for you to put the self aside and your own needs aside while you put out fires at work or while you try and get a project off the ground or something like that. There can be a sense of martyrdom for the career or martyrdom for your boss or martyrdom for something that the government wants from you and you have to give up something of the self in order to fulfill whatever it is that the, they require. That's another thing. Now, the good news is, because there is some good news with Neptune retrograde, is that there can be uh, a heightening of inspiration. So while you might be vague about how to make things happen, I want to just encourage you uh, to trust your gut, trust your instinct. You might not have a clear idea of the outcome, but you might get inspired. And I want to trust your inspiration because that's what Neptune Retrograde is all about. So you might sit down one Saturday afternoon with a cup of coffee on the couch and do what I love to do, just daydream and look out the window. And suddenly, you you know, a, an idea for a story comes to your mind. And you're like, well, I don't know where that's coming from. I don't know what that's why I'm thinking about that. But you know what? I'm going to write this story. Sit down and start typing away. And before you know it, you've got the, the meat um, sort of the skeleton that you want to put meat on at a later date of a wonderful fantasy story that you've written. I want you to trust those inspirations. I want to trust you to trust those creativities that come through, even if you don't know what they're for or where they're leading or what they're all about, because down the track, that Neptune retrograde in the 10th house experience could lead you to some higher level of respect in the world or success in the world or... Um, reward for what you're putting out there your creativity you might not see it at the time but it could be leading you to something magical in the future remember Neptune comes in in a misty way when he's doing his magical work so trust those inspirations those spiritual moments those creative moments and go with the flow knowing that in some way it may well serve you into the future Neptune retrograding over the next five months so uh, before we conclude, Gemini, I just want to say that there is only one week left to make the most of my discounted offer for the Royal Stars Academy. One more week for my mid-year enrollments at $100 off the introductory level or the, or the intermediate level or both of the Royal Stars Academy. Now, a lot of people leave comments saying, well, hey, I don't need the Royal Stars Academy. I can learn everything I want to off YouTube. And I'm like, well, you can learn astrology off YouTube, but it's only Dr. Seuss level astrology. If you want Shakespeare level astrology, it's a completely different ball game. You need a tutor, a teacher, a mentor. You need to do a course. You need um, to study deeply because YouTube is not enough. People on YouTube, and I follow a lot of astrologers on YouTube, we all just give the surface. This is what's happening this week. This is what this aspect means. There is so much more to astrology than that, my friends. So come and join me at the Royal Stars Academy if you want to go beyond Dr. Seuss level astrology. Also, don't forget to visit my Patreon family this week for a fabulous full moon breakdown for all signs and find out how the full moon is affecting you at a personal level. Cancer. Cancer rising, Cancer sun or Cancer moon. I encourage you to look at all three uh, of your placements. The energy of Neptune retrograde is occurring for you in the ninth house. Now, this is happening over the next five months um, from uh, July to December. And so you might find that over the next five months, you're really hungry for a vision for humanity, hungry for utopian ideals to be fulfilled on earth. And you, because it's so hard and almost impossible for utopian ideals to be fulfilled on earth amongst humanity, you might be feeling at certain stages of the next five months disillusioned and cynical about the reality of life on earth. Trust me, I'm a Pisces rising. I know that feeling all too well. And it's hard. It's really hard. So that might be something to be aware of over the next few months, my Cancer friends. But this is a house that has to do with our purpose and our meaning, having a direction, having a vision and a goal. I want this for my life. Neptune retrograding in this area of the chart might make you feel somewhat vague. You know what? I thought I wanted to achieve a high business success in this realm, but now I feel confused. I think maybe all I want is to sort of be a stay-at-home mum. You know, there's this 
vagueness around what you thought you wanted and is it really what you wanted is it really going to fulfill you deeply who knows there's a vagueness about your purpose your meaning your future visions your future goals remember the ninth house is the house before the house of public recognition you've got to have the ambition you've got to have the the vision before you gain the reward the public recognition or the success so expect to be feeling a little vague and that's okay go with the flow trust what comes up let the divine unfold as it needs to and just trust that you are going in the right direction and that things will become clear for you once Neptune has ceased his retrograde phase there might be some heightened sensitivity here particularly around your beliefs around your ethics around your morals somebody pushes your button somebody challenges you over the next five months about something that you've taken a stand on something that means a lot to you something that's significant to you and you're sensitive you're sensitized you you res respond in a, a reactive way because it's in this deep meaning in your beliefs in your truth uh, in your ethics and your morals for you now and you're really attached to them Neptune retrograding gives that heightened sensitivity in the ninth house to those things there might also be some fears or paranoia this is a house of travel and international affairs you might be worried about traveling you might be thinking oh my goodness I was going to go to Turkey and now I'm not sure if I should really go because there's been that earthquake that you know and I'm not sure that it's all safe to go back there and blah 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 and fears and paranoias that are probably unfounded might pop up um, particularly regarding travel or um, connection with international cultures so expect that that might be the case do your due diligence speak to experts and try to you know where you can allay any unfounded fears or paranoias or worry this is also a house of martyrdom and of course you might find that you are martyring yourself um, for the sake of some sort of high court hearing you know you're sacrificing who you are so that you can go to court I've seen I've seen it so many times in friends and clients where they just have to win this is a house of you know high level court cases and they spend you know like I knew one guy one time who spent nearly a million dollars pursuing a divorce in court going to the the high court like and spending so much money because he was just so keen to um to win he had to win at all costs and he was really martyring his financial situation which would be devastated if he'd lost for the sake of the court case win so just be careful of that neptune retrograde martyrs ourself for something and in this case you might be martyring yourself for a high level court appearance martyring your financial situation martyring your peace of mind and your tranquility for the sake of you know so do be, be aware of that um, you might martyr yourself uh, for, this is the house of a second life partner you know you might be with a uh, you know on your second marriage or something like that and you just find that you're constantly over the next five months sacrificing yourself for the sake of that partner over and over and over and over again this is also the house um, of the third child and so you might find that you are martyring yourself for your third child in the family for some reason or another you might be martyring yourself for the sake of your beliefs that happens a lot doesn't it I mean <laughs> the the age-old missionaries thrown to the lions or Christians thrown to the lions like the literal martyrs here for the sake of their belief um, you know don't do it <laughs> there's nothing's worth that um, especially when it's religion if you ask me but anyhow it's my personal opinion you might be finding that you are sacrificing your own happiness and well-being and social standing and sense of good for the sake of a belief you know um it's up to your own moral integrity whether that's the right thing for you to do or not but martyrdom in the ninth house might mean that there's something that comes up over the next nine months that causes that to be a thing in your life so how far do you want to take your beliefs how far do you want to stick to your truth you know um, look I, and I say this you know and I've said referred to religion as being a, an example of that but truly if somebody um, said you must renounce astrology or we're going to burn you at the stake if they said that to me I mean how can I renounce what I know is real what I know is true see you later I'm going to be burnt at the stake so you know what it, what do you believe what are your morals and ethics 
how much you prepared to be martyred for them. Hopefully not burnt at the stake, but there might be a, a circumstance where you might have to sacrifice something. Neptune is a planet of self-sacrifice for the sake of a belief uh, in some way. Now, the good news with Neptune retrograde is that this is um, the realm of creativity. Neptune retrograde is creativity and spiritual inspiration and upliftment. And here in one of the houses that is all about communication with the divine, you're likely to get psychic downloads. You're likely to get creative inspiration that really serves a purpose for your future. You'll, so trust the divine if it's asking you to write a poem or a song or something like that. This, there's meaning in this. There's, a, there's a, probably a message for humanity in that song. Um, so trust the divine with whatever inspiration is coming through for you over the next five months because it's going to use Neptune retrograde to speak through you, to give a message to humanity or um, to communicate with you in an important way through creativity, through spiritual insight and understanding, through a level of inspiration. Look forward to that. That's one of the blessings of Neptune retrograding in the ninth house, my beautiful Cancer friends. I want to just say before we move on, my Royal Stars Academy has only one week left where you can uh, join for $100 off at the intermediate level or the introductory level or both if you're interested. This is my mid-year enrollment. You can join at any time, but I wanted to offer a special discount for people who join midway through 2023. This is it. It's going to end this week, so jump on board. Um, many people say in the comments, oh, I don't need to join the Royal Stars Academy because, you know, I, I know astrology from watching YouTube. Well, yes, you might know a certain level of astrology, but it's like comparing Dr. Seuss with Shakespeare. Who wants to just live at the sh at Dr. Seuss level? Green eggs and ham, you know? I would rather know Romeo and Juliet and Hamlet and deep, meaty astrology. So come join me at the Royal Stars Academy and go from Dr. Seuss level to uh, Shakespearean level astrology. And don't forget, my friends, visit my Patreon family for a fabulous full moon report all about the energy of this gorgeous, blessed full moon trine Jupiter and how it will be affecting you personally. I'll catch you there. All right. Thank you, Cancer. Now, Leo, Leo rising, Leo sun, Leo moon people, the energy of Neptune retrograding for the next five months in your eighth house is where it's going to be felt. Over here, Pisces is your eighth house for Leo people. So this might lead over the next five months to some sort of circumstance where you're in denial about a partner's finances or you may have problems with taxes or insurances or investments in some way. Um, you might be disillusioned or foggy or misty about those things. So get your taxes done ASAP before Neptune goes retrograde, my Leo friends, if you can. That's me. I should do them soon. Um, but you really need to make sure that you're clear about where your money is, um, where your money has gone, and what's happening with any mutual finances that you have or any wills or inheritances and that sort of thing. Because Neptune retrograde here will make things a little bit misty, a little bit foggy and unclear. Um, you could be very vague, uh, you know, about what you get. Oh, Nana said she'd leave me her diamond necklace. And then, you know, they go through the family will and it's not left to you. And you're like, but hang on, she said, and I'm not clear. Why have I not been left this? And why have I been left this instead, something else instead? Um, vagueness, lack of clarity about a financial situation or partner's resources or that kind of thing. You might also be highly sensitized by another person and the way they're handling their money. It might trigger you. You might get upset, usually a partner in this instance. You know, maybe a partner's spending willy-nilly, buying, you know, couch after couch after couch, and you're like, all we need is one. What is the deal with five couches in the house, you know? And um, there is this um, sensitivity, like you're frustrated. There is a sense of I don't understand why you've got to spend our money like this lack of clarity about the way another person is spending their money or using their money that kind of thing they're buying five couches for you you got to wonder hey what's really going on anyhow there might also be um, some fears and paranoia this is a house of fear and paranoia um, obsession and, and jealousy and so Neptune going retrograde here can lift that into a, like a greater level so have some strategies you know if you're feeling like 
paranoid about something or fearful about something, what are you going to do? Have a strategy before you go into this Neptune retrograde phase to deal with that. Maybe speaking to a friend might be something that works for you and you just offload and they can calm your you know frayed nerves you know it's not as bad as what you think it is it's going to work out better than you know da, 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 da. friend who can reassure you could be a strategy there are many other strategies as well um you know maybe if you're worried about sort of a, a financial situation with a partner um, you could speak to a financial professional um, somebody who can assure you or guide you or help you make decisions together as a, a partnership so that could be another thing as well um, be careful yeah this is a house of our partner's resources Leo so um, don't exploit your partner's generosity while Neptune is retrograding here can I just say that's bad juju bad karma um, make sure that you are not um, causing your partner to martyr themselves for you financially or with their resources or with their stuff Make sure that you are not the one bringing bad karma into the situation. Um, because this is the house of other people's resources and Neptune retrograde represents self-sacrifice -sac yeah, and martyring. So they are the ones who might be doing that for you. That's not healthy. That's not good. Make sure that you are owning your responsibilities, your resources and the way you work with, you, with money. Okay? Don't be leaning on somebody else and making them suffer because of you, Leo. Um, okay, what else can I say about this? Uh, something good that this represents is that it, Neptune retrograde is an energy of heightened um, creativity and inspiration. And this is a house of mystical healers. So by seeing a shaman, by going to a Reiki practitioner, by getting some psychological counseling or something, all these people who work in the psychological and mystical realms, you may find that you get some spiritual download, an aha moment, or a divine level of creativity. You know, there's a healing that takes place here. This is one of the healing houses when Neptune's retrograde. So it is a good time, my beautiful Leo friends, to go see that past life regression nurse, to go and see that Reiki healer or get some acupuncture or, um, you know, uh, that kind of thing. I would encourage that under this energy for the next five months at any stage. Now, of course, you want to look at what's going on in your personal chart, whether there's any personal influences that say don't. But generally speaking, remember, this is a general reading. And um, you might like to consider taking some alternative therapy that could lead to inspiration for you. This is also the house of in, um, initiation in a spiritual sense. And so um, you might find that there's something that occurs in a very sort of misty way. Remember, Neptune is mistiness, fogginess. It sort of infiltrates us. So do, do journal my beautiful Leo friends, what are you feeling? What are you experiencing at the beginning of this Neptune transit and compare it with where you're at in December? What has infiltrated your understanding regarding greater consciousness, regarding spirituality, regarding your understanding of the divine? Because there's likely to be a rise that comes out in, in your, your consciousness levels that comes out of this particular period while Neptune is retrograding during the next five months. You might be inspired to do some in-depth research of spiritual topics, of hidden realms, of connection with the divine, trying to understand chakras, doing some in-depth research about sexuality and its correspondence to our sense of personal happiness, um, our sense of uh, power and uh, perhaps magical sexuality as well, looking at how manifestation and sex go hand in hand. You might be very inspired with Neptune Retrograde to do a deep dive into those sorts of things and I would encourage you to do so because this energy is very supportive of that being a magical and, and blessed influence on your life over the next uh, eight, not eight months, five months with Neptune in the eighth house. Now, before I conclude, Leo, I want to mention my Royal Stars Academy. I'm, I, you can join at any stage during the year, but I wanted to offer a special mid-year enrollment deal. It's currently $100 off for the intermediate and um, introductory levels or both, $100 off each. Um, this is only available for the next week. 
and I just want to say so many people leave comments on my YouTube channel saying well I learn all I need to know about astrology off YouTube and I'm like well that is actually equivalent to Dr. Seuss level astrology when really what you want is Shakespeare level astrology you want to go in depth you want to understand the meatiness that is available to you in astrology YouTube astrologers they're only giving you the surface the tip of the iceberg there is so much more that astrology offers so much more empowerment available to you through astrology and really understanding it and applying it to your life don't think that Dr. Seuss level astrology is all that you need come join me at the Royal Stars Academy and find out just how much more there is to know um, in uh, astrological understanding and also don't forget to visit my Patreon family this week for a fabulous full moon report understand how this this full moon making a trine to Jupiter is going to be blessed uh, blessing you and affecting you personally thanks Leo okay Virgo Virgo rising Virgo Sun Virgo moon people well my Virgo friends the energy of Neptune retrograding is occurring for you over here in your seventh house the house of other people because it's the house that is furthest from us represented by the first house so Neptune here retrograding can indicate that over the next five months in some way you might be interacting with needy people um, and maybe addicted people uh, people who are um, in the shadow side needy people addicted people people who are deceptive in some way uh, in the positive with Neptune at its most potent when it's retrograde you might be interacting with people who are creative or spiritual or a bit dreamy in some way or idealistic in some way so you might find there's more of those Neptunian types of people in your life that you're encountering over the next five months do be careful this is the house of our marriage partners and relationship partners Virgo you might be idealizing a partner over the next five months that can be a bit of a, a, a trip up because when we put people on a pedestal inevitably we're disappointed people don't people are not perfect and and often cannot live up to the ideal we project on them in our minds so be careful Neptune energy can cause you to be doing this one other thing I would say about that is don't mix friends and money during this Neptune retrograde period you know um, it's not really the best time for Virgo people to go into partnerships with other people because with Neptune retrograde in the house of partnerships you may stand to be disappointed deceived uh, have the wool pulled over your eyes in some way or you might like let's say you go into a business partnership with someone you might find that you are you are martyring yourself for the sake of that partnership and the other person's doing diddly squat so keep that in mind as well um, unless you've got mitigating factors happening in your natal chart this isn't the best time to be initiating collaborations with others that especially around things that have to do with money relation like uh, love ro romantic relationships that's okay but where there's money involved in a business type collaboration it's not really the best energy for you Neptune is divine love so that's why it's it's not so bad if it's a love relationship that we're talking about Neptune is not very good when it comes to financial tangible earth related resources like money and so you, you want to kind of steer a bit clear of that um, if possible uh, what else can I say about this so you might be a bit um, vague about what you want in relationships during the next um, the next five months you might think you want you know this hero or beautiful relationship that you've got in your head and it doesn't manifest and you're disappointed so there's a vagueness there's an idealism you might be very misty not kind of being clear about what it is you want not not expressing to a partner very clearly what you want in the relationship and so the relationship ends up confused and um, a little bit you know disillusioned because of that you might also be quite sensitized about your relationship for example you know you might find that uh, your partner says something that ordinarily is like water off a duck's back to you and you don't care less but under this energy Neptune retrograde in the seventh house it really triggers you it really presses all your buttons and you're like oh, I'm done with this I've had enough of this um, so you are going to be more sensitized with Neptune retrograding here 
There might also be some fears and paranoias that come up for you, Virgo, regarding relationship energies. You might find, um, you know, you're worried about the relationship, might be unfounded, uh, you know, paranoia about what your partner is doing, you know, obsession, jealousies, that kind of thing. Do be careful of that. If you're feeling that way, there's nothing wrong with going and seeing a marriage counsellor and allaying your fears or um, talking things through so that you can get some you know as much clarity through external support as you can while Neptune is retrograding in the house of other people and partnerships. Um, I do want to also mention that uh, there can be martyrdom for other people that occurs um, Virgo so do be careful of that giving yourself away for the sake of another person you know you your partner is just watching TV all day and you're doing all the cooking, the cleaning, you're working full time, you're taking care of the kids and they're doing diddly squat and it can really cause resentment when you're when you're martyring yourself. Neptune retrograde can amplify that energy of um, martyrdom that causes resentment. Okay, so be conscious of that and speak up. Don't be afraid to put a boundary in place and say, hey, you can't sit there watching days of our lives all day long. You've got to come and help me cook dinner and um, take the kids to basketball practice and whatever else. The good news is that this is a very spiritualizing effect. So you might find that you bond deeply with your partner over some spiritual experience that you have together or you go and, and do like a holiday or a retreat with your partner and you really feel closer, more divine love with your partner. That's another expression of Neptune retrograde in this realm as well. And so I would encourage you at some stage over the next five months, if you're in a partnership, take a retreat with your partner. Go and get a massage together. Um, may, maybe visit the ocean. Pisces rules the ocean. Go and visit the ocean together. Um, be in a place of retreat and escape, a place that's uplifting, a place is not, that is not the ordinary everyday reality that you're living with your partner. And you might find that it really brings a level of blessing that you, you wouldn't otherwise have felt if Neptune hadn't been retrograde. Now I want to mention to my Virgo friends, the Royal Stars Academy for one more week is uh, at $100 off for both levels of the course. This is my mid-year enrollment offer. You can join at any time, but I wanted to give a special opportunity for people who wanted to enroll in, at the mid-year point. Um, and this is really, like I get a lot of comments on, in my YouTube channel about people who say oh I can learn astrology off YouTube I don't need to do a course I don't need to buy any books I can learn all I need for free off YouTube well you can learn stuff for free off YouTube absolutely but it's only the tip of the iceberg it's like trying to learn high level English by reading Dr Seuss books it's never going to happen at some point you need to embrace Shakespeare you need to go deeper and that's where doing a course or um, studying with a mentor or a teacher is going to give you so much more than just listening to the tip of the iceberg on YouTube. So come join me at my Royal Stars Academy while there's $100 off you can't lose. Also don't forget to visit my Patreon family this week for a fabulous full moon report and how this beautiful full moon trying to Jupiter will be affecting you personally. Thank you Virgo. Now Libra, Libra rising, Libra sun, Libra moon people. Well, the energy, get this all right here, the energy of the full moon, sorry, not the full moon, the energy of Neptune retrograde is falling in your sixth house. My Libra and friends, you might find for the next five months while this is occurring that you are super sensitive to your work environment. You want the ideal workspace. You want the ideal work colleagues. You want things to just flow, but that doesn't really exist in reality. So you might find that this idealism you have about your daily life um, leads you to a, a point of disappointment because it just doesn't happen. We live in a, a world that is gritty. So beware of the disappointment, beware of the frustration that might occur regarding your everyday ordinary reality and be willing to flow with the imperfections and the grittiness that life brings. I would encourage you Librans, and you're very good at this anyway, Libra rising people, organize and beautify your workplace this will help you feel better bring in that bunch of flowers um, make sure that you know all your books and your papers and stuff are well organized and you will feel more like you're getting towards that ideal workplace and not quite so frustrated it's funny because you know I'm Libra moon 
and I've been feeling, I just said to my partner this morning, you know, I, uh, in one of the weekends coming up, I want to just put aside some time to organize my books and my desk and do some spring cleaning. And, and as I'm doing this reading for you now, I know why. Neptune is about to retrograde in my um, sixth house from my moon placement. So astrology, you can't deny it. It works every time. So that's, that's one thing that will really help you, my beautiful Libra and friends. Now, this, this is also the realm of health and well-being. And Neptune retrograde can really make things vague. You might be like, you know, I, I feel like I should be exercising or eating healthy, but I don't really know what it is I need to do that's best for me and my body. So maybe it's a time when you could speak to a professional or get some external advice, uh, like speak to a dietitian or go and speak to a personal trainer about what's going to be best for your health and well-being, your body. Um, maybe speak to a naturopath, that kind of thing, if needed. Neptune here also speaks to... Um, alternative practitioners, um, herbalists, uh, things like that, uh, naturopaths like I said. So you might find that you are blessed by going and seeing somebody in uh, who practices in those realms uh, during this time also. But there can generally be personal vagueness, that's why it's good to get um, feedback from a professional during this time. You might be more sensitized over the next five months to your health so do be careful Libra of um, your feet your lymph glands um, anything to do with your eyes as well um, particularly uh, any toxins so you know go steady while Neptune is retrograding in the house of health and well-being and toxicity go steady on the alcohol drugs um, overindulgences like too much chocolate and that kind of thing which I'm prone to just be careful of that because you're more, your body is more sensitized to those things affecting you in a negative way while Neptune is retrograding. So if you usually have maybe a glass, of, a glass or two of wine in the evening, maybe limit it, maybe you know, drop down from two glasses to one glass. Uh, uh, as I said in the intro, whatever you usually take that's on the more toxic side, medicine, alcohol, too much of you know sugar or that sort of thing whatever you usually take it's going to affect you more significantly while you're sensitized so cut it back um, so you don't need as much to get the same buzz or the same effect while Neptune is retrograde okay now this is a house of um, problems and it's a house of worry this Neptune retrograde can bring fears and paranoias to the surface so you might be worrying more than usual about something or, or fearing a problem more than usual. It's not that there are more problems when Neptune retrogrades in this area. It's not that there are more things to worry about. It's just that that's your response. And so recognize that. Tell yourself, hey, look, I, I, nothing has changed. Things are no worse than they were when Neptune was direct. I'm going to just do some you know, breath work or I'm going to meditate or I'm going to write in my journal, whatever it takes to calm those inner voices, to calm those fears um, and paranoias that might crop up around your everyday life, around problems that we encounter on a day-to-day -day basis like paying the bills and eating healthy and, you know, all that sort of thing. Um, do what you need to to calm the mind. Be careful also, Libra, of martyring yourself for other people here. Um, in this case, it's, you know, martyring yourself for, uh, you know, uh, the sake of just peace. You're Libra. You want peace. You want harmony, right? This is the house of our court cases, our problems with um, enemies and so on, and people who would seek to do us harm. And you might martyr yourself just in order to keep the peace. You know, somebody's driving you up the wall and you just give them what you want to shut them up. You know, I had to go through a process of that recently. Um, you, I just want you to be aware that you may be more inclined to martyr yourself and give yourself away to shut up some problem person or an enemy or somebody who seeks to do you harm or um, wishes you ill. The answer to that is probably very dependent on your personal circumstances, so I can't give a solution that's one size fits all, of course, but just be careful that you don't sacrifice yourself so much that you end up with resentment and anger and frustration in your body. It's not healthy to do that, okay? Know your limits, know your boundaries, what you're prepared to give and where you will draw the line, my beautiful, um, my beautiful Libra and friends. Finally, you might actually get some inspiration 
from spirit with how to deal with a problem over the next five months. You might get a, a, a word from the divine with how to um, manage a conflict or fix a conflict because Neptune is creative inspiration. It is a uh, word from spirit and the divine sort of pulling the strings for us. And when Neptune's retrograde, it's closer to the earth, so its energy is more potent in that way. Remember also Neptune has to do with forgiveness. Forgiveness is a terrific help um, if, if you can work on forgiving somebody, not letting them off the hook if they've done, you know, been really shitty towards you or something like that. You know, people need to, I'm a Libra and I need, and you're a Libra, you need justice. It needs to happen. But if you can forgive their action or whatever they did, um, it is really great for digestive issues in sixth house um, while Neptune is retrograde. Bring forgiveness in and it can help resolve a lot of those sixth house problems like digestive issues and feel like toxicity and um, you know uh, conflict and that sort of thing that are sixth house problems okay. So thank you my Libran friends. Now don't forget guys that there is one more week where you can purchase uh, your involvement or enrollment in the Royal Stars Academy for $100 off either at the introductory level or the intermediate level. A lot of people say that they get all they need to know about astrology off YouTube and I say that's the tip of the iceberg. It's like learning Dr. Seuss and thinking you can speak Shakespearean. You know it's not enough like astrology is such a deep complex science. If you really want to know astrology, if you really want to call yourself an astrologer, you need to go deeper than just YouTube surface level astrology. So come and join me at the Royal Stars Academy and go in depth. Find out the meaty goodness that is available to you through really understanding astrology at a deep level. Also don't forget to visit my Patreon family this month or this week rather for a fabulous full moon report moon trine jupiter um, and how it's going to be affecting you at a personal level thank you libra now for scorpio scorpio rising scorpio sun and scorpio moon people the energy of this wonderful um, neptune retrograde or mm, wonderful is one word i guess um, this interesting shall we say neptune retrograde is falling for you in the fifth house this is going to be in action from july to december you might be looking for perfection in relationships during this time that could lead to disappointment because this is the house of love and romance and you might you know have this romantic ideal that is just so fanciful about what you want or what your partner should be doing or what you're looking for in a partner and it can lead to frustration and disappointment don't enter into love affairs i would say while neptune is retrograde unless you've got other things in your chart that are very helpful and very um beneficial every every person's chart is unique but as a general rule neptune retrograding in the fifth house by transit it's not a good time to enter into love affairs because we tend to do so to escape the pain of a failed relationship or a perceived life difficulty you know if only i had a love then everything would be wonderful everything would be roses and I'd be happy and this is an illusion you know it's smoke and mirrors it's not the truth you've got to be happy in and of yourself before a relationship can be fulfilling so my beautiful friends don't um, yeah think twice before entering into a relationship if you're doing so to escape something in life that you're not happy about when Neptune is transiting through the fifth house. Um, this is an energy of feeling vague about what we really want. You might be vague about a love or a boyfriend or a girlfriend. You might be vague about what would make you happy, what gives you joy. You know, you might think, oh, if only I, you know, had this Prada bag, then I'd be happy and joyful for the rest of my life. And it's an illusion. It's a deception. Neptune energy in the fifth house. So um, whatever it happens to be that you think is going to give you joy, you may be disillusioned you may be disappointed um, if that's what you're putting all your eggs into the basket for during Neptune retrograde another thing that we need to be aware of while Neptune's retrograde in the fifth house is that we are heightened in our sensitivities so you know maybe our children this is the house of children our children do something say something behave in a certain way and we just react because we're so sensitized oh we're hurt because our children got c's instead of a pluses on their report card oh my god and we're overly sensitized to something our children do or something our lover does 
And I just want to encourage you, remember, oh, Neptune's retrograding. Am I overreacting here? Am I, am I not seeing this for what it really is? Am I not, you know, taking life lightly and going with the flow? Remember, um, you're going to be overly sensitized to fifth house things. Like, coupled with that, there might also be some fears and paranoias that pop up over the next five months as well. Worrying about your children, paranoid about who your children are hanging out with, or uh, maybe your, your lover goes and hangs out with your boys for a weekend and you're just like in your head about, oh, what's going to happen? You're going on a fishing trip and, oh, my God, someone's going to come back with a broken leg. I just know it. And just silly stuff, paranoias and fears. Neptune heightens those things regarding fifth house issues. Um, I just want to say, have some strategies in mind to, you know, in, at your beck and call to help you deal with those moments, those fears, and try and ground yourself in reality. Even if that's going and speaking to a friend or a mentor or your partner or somebody who can help put your feet back on the ground and not be carried away into the ether with fears and paranoias about um, fifth house issues. Um, do be careful, my friends, over the next five months of martyring yourself for your children. We do tend to do that as parents. It is sort of a, a thing, isn't it, when we're parents to give and give self-sacrificially -sacrific to our children. I just want to say, have some boundaries. Neptune retrograde is not all that good at boundaries. Have some boundaries in place regarding how much you're willing to give for your children so you don't resent it, so you aren't angry down the track that, oh, you know, I spent... $40,000 a year for you to go to a private school and then you're up and quit in grade nine, you know, what the heck? Um, you know, try to be grounded and not and have some boundaries in place and some realism about who your children are, who your lovers are, what you're prepared to give, what you feel that they should be um, giving back in return. And, and boundaries are so important and they stop us from overly giving, self-sacrificing and, and giving ourselves away. The good news is with this placement is that your creativity is going to be off the charts the next five months. So it's a great time to start, you know, getting involved in performance or um, dressing up for a good time, playing games, having fun, being glamorous in some way, tapping into your levels of confidence, bringing your true innate intelligence out for the world to see, um, particularly in creative, spiritual or inspirational ways. This is like the house of the fire of God. Um, Neptune retrograding here can really bring in some you know, inspired stage performances or um, very inspired poetry writing that kind of thing especially in the sign of Pisces so if you're feeling led Scorpio to um, do some sort of creative work write a song or a, a musical or something like that um, then go with it trust this flow of energy even if you don't know what the outcome is going to be even if it's something you've never done before trust that this is the divine working through the house of true creativity true creative intelligence you might be astounded at what comes up. Remember, Neptune is only in this fifth house of creative intelligence for um, another, I think it's two to three years. Uh, and it's been there since 2008. So this, uh, 2008 or 2010, sorry, the exact date escapes me. But this has been a very unique period of your life for you to grow in your creative capacity. And make the most of this Neptune retrograde period to, in, to keep facilitating that and keep feeding that in your life. Um, make the most of this wonderful creative opportunity that's only going to be with you for the next couple of years. And then it's all over for the rest of your life in that regard. You'll probably get creative inspiration from other things going on in your chart. But Neptune is divine inspiration in the house of um, a true creative intelligence. This is such a wonderful season of your life to really create and bring blessing to the world through your uh, unique divine downloads of creative intelligence. So thank you, Scorpio. I want to just mention that the Royal Stars Academy has only one more week for you to join at my mid-year discount. You can join at any time, but for one week you can join one more week you can join for $100 off the intermediate level or the introductory level, or both. Um, some people leave comments saying, oh, you know, I don't need this. This is, this, you, this is crap, when they haven't even done the Royal Stars Academy to know, but they say things like that. 
um, because I can learn all I need to know off YouTube astrologers. And I'm like, well, you can learn off YouTube astrologers, but it's only the tip of the iceberg. It's like learning Dr. Seuss and thinking you can speak Shakespearean English. It doesn't add up. You need immersion in the deep um, depths of meaty astrology. So that might mean getting a mentor or a tutor or doing a course like the Royal Stars Academy. But if you think that the, what you're getting on YouTube, and I follow hundreds of YouTube astrologers, if you think what you're getting on YouTube is enough, you're sadly mistaken. <laughs> so come and join me at the Royal Stars Academy. Get certified or just simply go in depth so you understand the true um, meaty astrology. Come and join me there. And you Scorpio people, you know what it's like. You want to go in depth. This surface level, tip of the iceberg stuff, that's not your deal. So come join me at the Royal Stars Academy. Also, don't forget to visit my Patreon family for a fabulous full moon report uh, all about the full moon in trying to Jupiter and how it's going to affect you most blessedly in a personal way. Thanks, Scorpio. All righty. Sagittarius rising, sun or moon people. The energy of this wonderful, well, let's hope it's wonderful, this Neptune retrograde period for the next five months is playing out for you in the fourth house, an angular house, therefore a very important house. For many Sagittarian people, they need, there's going to be over the next five months, a strong need for calm in their domestic environment, for a serene domestic environment, because chaos when Neptune's retrograding in the fourth house can feel very unsettling, very emotionally full of upheaval. So I just encourage you, beautiful Sagittarian friends, to do all you can to create calm in your domestic environment and peace in your domestic environment. Now, when we have Neptune retrograding in the fourth house, we can be a little bit vague about the kind of domestic environment that we want, the kind of family relationships that we want. Um, we might think, oh, I want to live here or I want to live there. And it's misty, it's foggy. We're not quite clear. You know, I thought I wanted to live down by the beach, but actually I want to live up near the forests. Oh, which one do I really want? There's confusion when Neptune is retrograde. So for some people, it's not, it's not the best time for making a decision about buying a property or a piece of land. If you are looking at doing that, I would encourage you to maybe get some outside advice while Neptune's retrograding in the fourth house. You know, go and speak to a real estate agent or a property investing investment guru or something like that. Try and get some wisdom that can help you make a clearer decision. If you try to do it by yourself, it can be very vague, misty, foggy about how you are investing your, ma your money into property, etc. There's also a heightened sensitivity here that can happen while Neptune's retrograde. So at some point in the next five months, you might find that you're uh, sensitized to a family matter. You know, children, if you're a parent, your children might sort of trigger you. Um, maybe there might be a situation with elderly parents that is highly sensitive, um, you know, causes a sensitive reaction in you. That can happen as well, Neptune retrograding in the fourth house. Um, so some family dynamic might cause you to be reactive. Keep that in mind. There can also be some fears and paranoias about a family situation or a domestic environment or something to do with land and property and home. Remember that the circumstances might not actually be any different to what you've known already up until this point. But your reaction might change. Your energy about that situation might change and you might be more worried. You might be more fearful. Neptune retrograde can bring that about. So again, speaking to professionals can help alleviate fears. Um, talking things out with a friend or a partner can also be very helpful. Journaling about things, meditating, praying. These are all good strategies for trying to find a sense of balance with um, your concerns and worries about home and domestic life at some point over the next five months. Be careful, my friends, about martyring yourself, self-sacrificing for a mortgage or a property. You know, it could be very stressful in that regard. You know, you're giving maybe 70% of your income is going on a property or a mortgage and you're like, how am I going to make ends meet? How am I going to manage here? Um, we overgive whenever Neptune is retrograde and in the area of domestic life and home, then this is a period where you know you might find that you are you know, causing stress and self-sacrifice for the sake of a home. For, and is it worth it? You've got to really weigh it up. Is it worth this monstrous mortgage just to have five bedrooms and two bathrooms and blah, blah, blah? Maybe I should 
think about making a change. Again, you might be feeling very vague about how you go about making the change or how you can make the change. Um, speak to a professional if you need to, but you might be martyring yourself for the sake of safety, security, um, domestic stability, to belong in a certain community. Another way this might manifest is that you know you're giving up self to to fit in in community, to to belong to a community that maybe you know you've outgrown, maybe a, a family situation that you la no longer feel like you want to be part of. So. Um, maybe you're part of a family business and Neptune goes retrograde and you know what I just feel um, like I'm giving up myself to please mum and dad who want me to take over the family funeral business or whatever it is and so there's this energy of I'm I'm sacrificing myself for the family business or the family heritage or roots um, or to belong in a certain community and it feels difficult so there might be that sort of feeling that comes up in the next five months for you as well. The good news is that this is um, an energy of heightened creativity and inspiration here in the fourth house of the, our deep emotions and our sense of belonging and uh, our foundation. You might find that you are getting creative and it makes you feel good. You might get creative in your home. You might be painting a wall or putting up some wallpaper or something in a domestic environment and oh, it makes you feel happy. It makes you feel like you belong in wherever it happens to be. You take ownership and feel a sense of putting down roots in, by being creative, by bringing your um, maybe your spiritual inspiration or your ideas and creative um, juices into a home environment, a physical home perhaps, or a domestic environment uh, of some nature. So I'd encourage you, get creative in the home and you might find that all these other difficult things I've spoken about are less important in your life. Way to mitigate that. So my beautiful Saggy friends, can I just say that my Royal Stars Academy Learning Astrology course is available for one more week at $100 off. You can get $100 off either the, the intermediate level or the introductory level or both of them. You can get $100 off each. So I'm very excited to offer this, but I get a lot of people writing and saying, um, you know, oh, I can learn everything I want off um, YouTube. And I'm like, can you? Can you really? Because I follow a lot of YouTube astrologers and we all, including myself, all offer the tip of the iceberg. Here's a little bit to tantalize you and give you a taste of just how amazing astrology is. And if you think that is the be all end all, then you're missing out on the rest of the iceberg that sits below the water. It's like learning Dr. Seuss and saying I can speak Shakespearean English. It's not going to happen. So if you really want the meaty astrology come and join me at the royal stars academy while it's on sale while it's on discount and learn all you can about this wonderful science also don't forget to visit my patreon family um, for a fabulous full moon trine jupiter report and how it's going to be affecting you at a personal level links are all in the description below thank you sagittarius capricorn rising capricorn sun capricorn moon well you've got an exciting uh, week ahead with the full moon falling in your first house. We'll talk about that a little later. Um, but I just want to mention that Neptune is retrograding in your third house for the next five months. So this is a time, it's very interesting actually, when Neptune retrogrades in the third house, it can be a time where at some stage in the next five months you might get a bit lost, literally. You know, you've got to go to a new city, you can't find your way. And you're left scratching your head like hang on how do i get out of this one-way street um that is neptune retrograde can actually make you lost vagueness with directions can be a thing um vagueness with the ability to read maps you might be the you know the world's best map reader otherwise but hang on you can't quite get your head around this one this time neptune going retrograde in the third house um, I have heard it said by some astrologers that developing an interest in numerology when Neptune is retrograde in the third house can actually help. Um, uh, you know, so look into numerology during this time. It can be very clarifying, Neptune retrograding there. I, I haven't sort of put that to the test myself because I haven't had Neptune retrograding in my third house, <laughs> so I don't know. Um, but yes, leave a comment. Let us know how numerology might be helping you during this retrograde transit this is a realm of the chart where you might be feeling a bit vague 
and of course the third house is the house of the mind so you might be a little bit foggy and misty in the head and that's okay if you're feeling a bit that way um, just go with it go with the flow use whatever comes to you creatively or spiritually to help you um, or, or to produce something unique in the world um, to come up with you know spiritual ideas creative ideas but it's not really an energy for logic and reason and you know um, those things that third house is usually associated with um, this is the house it's a very practical house the third house uh, of the mind um, usually the lower mind like simple instructions uh, manuals uh, guides um, dot points that kind of thing is what we see in the third house and Neptune can just make those things a little bit vague a little bit this is why I say if you might get lost reading maps because that's a, a third house activity um, so you could be feeling very vague in that regard at some point over the next five months with this energy you might also be have a heightened sensitivity with how can people are communicating with you an email comes in over the next five months and it triggers you you get frustrated you get angry about a, an email email or um, uh, maybe a, a social media post or a YouTube video that you watch all of these social media things that are seen through the third house you might be heightened in your sensitivity to something that they're saying or a communication that they're giving in some way so have some strategies in place if I get triggered by something I'm gonna go and talk to my best friend and hopefully they can give me clarity and um, see things from a different perspective and help calm me down you know um, fears and paranoias associated with our mental health uh, might come up as well so you might be worrying more than usual um, you might be overthinking the mental monkey mind might be keeping you up at night so Capricorn again you might like to have a, a good YouTube video meditation I put up one for solstice you might like to use that put on at three in the morning to help you get back to sleep or help calm that crazy monkey mind that's just running wild during Neptune retrograde season uh, so have some strategies to help you through this martyrdom well you know what this is the house of our relatives it's our siblings it's our neighbors and workshop groups are seen through the third house as well and when Neptune goes retrograde the energy of self-sacrifice can be amplified so some of you might be giving up self or denying self for the sake of peace with a neighbor um, or a sibling you know letting a sibling you know wipe their muddy boots on you kind of thing that can happen in some circumstances so know your boundaries and set limits I'm not going to allow them to take advantage me advantage of me any longer and if they do XYZ then I'll have to take action know your boundaries so you don't uh, give the self away so you don't martyr yourself with neighbors relatives siblings in in this regard for the next five months this is also an energy of heightened creativity and heightened spiritual inspiration so many of you people you Capricorn rising Sun and Moon people might get an inspire uh, inspiration to host a webinar or a seminar you might get um, inspired writing coming through for you you might be have an opportunity to speak in some way at a social function and you know it's like the divine is speaking through you when that happens Neptune retrograde third house is about the divine using you as an, an instrument to speak its message to the universe it might be through a social media post you might get an inspiration for a creative social media post in some way um, uh, maybe some sort of a workshop that you want to run and you, you get sort of a, a divine download for how to do it in a creative way that's going to really help people learn and integrate some piece of knowledge so it could be very very powerful for many of you if you're a crafts person um, if you're in sort of um, some sort of creative trade using your hands you know maybe you're a hairdresser maybe you're a, a woodworker of some description um, cabinet maker there, there might be such creative inspiration that comes through to you like you've never known while Neptune retrogrades here in the house of craftsmanship so you might do some of your best work creatively with your hands over the next uh, five months while Neptune retrogrades here as well now let me just conclude my beautiful Capricorn friends by saying that my Royal Stars Academy is on sale for only one more week $100 off either the introductory or the intermediate level or you can do both if you want to 
Um, but you really, if you really want to know astrology, you've got to do more than just listen to YouTube. So many people say to me, hey, I don't need to do, you know, study because I watch YouTube astrologers. I'm like, that's all well and good. And you can get a lot of information that way, but it's just the tip of the iceberg. If you want to practice astrology, if you want to teach astrology, if you want to know the, the significant mechanisms of all the different branches of astrology, you've got to do some, some actual study. And I would just encourage you, you know, it's like learning Dr. Seuss level English, thinking you're going to speak Shakespearean English. It, it, it just doesn't add up. You, so if you really want to go in deep with astrology, if you want to understand it fully, you've got to, go, you've got to get a mentor or a tutor or um, do a course like the Royal Stars Academy. So it's a great time this next week to enroll, get $100 off, go in depth with astrology, my Capricorn friends. And also don't forget to visit my Patreon family this week for a fabulous full moon trine to Jupiter report and how it will be affecting you at a personal level. Thank you, Capricorn. All right, Aquarius rising, sun and moon people, thank you for waiting till the very end, my Aquarius friends. So much to tell you. You have Neptune retrograding in the second house. Now, when this is occurring, it's going to last for five months until December, you might need to really work hard at viewing your finances and resources realistically. And I would encourage you to seek advice about any investments, about money management, that kind of thing. Because Neptune retrograde can make things regarding um, your resources and finances very unclear, very misty, very foggy. And in some cases, some people might stand to be somehow deceived or disappointed by how they've managed their money. So it is worthwhile getting advice from someone in the know. It could be a friend who knows how to manage money well. It could be a professional. Either way, um, somebody who doesn't have Neptune retrograding in the second house, preferably. Um, some of us, when Neptune retrogrades in the second house, we tend to undervalue our efforts. We tend to undercharge people for our services. We tend to be taken advantage of, perhaps, um, giving away our labor or our knowledge or our abilities without appropriate remuneration. So be, be careful about that as well. That's part of the martyrdom and self-sacrifice in a practical sense when Neptune is retrograding here for warned for armed. Also be very cautious about get rich quick schemes over the next five months. Um, be very cautious about who you loan your money to because this is an energy, Neptune retrograde, of deception, of having the wool pulled over your eyes, of being disappointed. Neptune in its highly retrograde phase. You might not be seeing the, the situation with the get rich quick scheme clearly during these months. So again, caution around financial matters is, is required due to the vagueness that Neptune retrograding in the second house can bring. You might also be very sensitized to your personal value and worth, you know. Um, you give yourself away, you charge less than you should, um, you come away having spent more money promoting a certain thing than you actually got out of it and you're frustrated, you're disappointed, you, your sensitivities are, um, are triggered under this energy. So for warned for armed about that, you know, as well, I mean, we all want to get um, what we are worth, what we value ourselves at. So have some boundaries in place, you know. I'm not going to work for less than X, Y, Z an hour, whatever money that is. I'm not going to um, give my time and my knowledge that I have worked so hard to attain away for free. You know, I, I need to put some appropriate boundaries in place so that I, I get what I deserve because I'm worth it. And my knowledge is worth it and my skills are worth it. So know your boundaries before you go into this retrograde phase of Neptune. You'll be less likely to give yourself away and martyr yourself for nothing. Um, we might find that during Neptune retrograde season in the second house, we have some fears and paranoias. Oh, what if I can't pay the bills? What if there's not enough money? What if I don't um, get what I need out of this particular material circumstance? In my life um, so fears and worry around money can crop up again strategies are a good idea you know when I worry about money you know it doesn't mean that you're gonna have any less money than usual because Neptune's retrograding in the second house but it means that you might be more paranoid about your financial state than you usually are 
Um, so again, talking things out with a friend, journaling, um, meditating, praying. You're in the sign of Pisces. Neptune's retrograding in the sign of Pisces, which is to pray. Um, in fact, for Aquarius people, they should pray about their money. They should seek the divine. They should ask for inspiration about how to invest and manage their money um, when you have Pisces as your second house in general. So that they're good methods. Piscean spiritual methods for approaching the dealing with resources um, is a great approach to sort of alleviate fears and paranoias that might crop up during Neptune's retrograde season here. Uh, but the good news is, my Aquarius friends, that there will be heightened creativity and spiritual inspiration that are connected to this house. So you might think, you know, you might, somebody might mention a film, Pisces is film, a film to you and they're looking for backers or something. Go and seek some advice from somebody who's in the financial know and if they give you the thumbs up, go for it because this is the house of inspiration and creativity. And creative things can give a, a really good result, usually over time, because Neptune, whether he's retrograde or direct, Neptune achieves his results in a misty way over sort of a long-term infiltrating into your life, not as a sudden lightning bolt shock. So trust the flow. Like if you are inspired to go and invest in a film, then trust that flow during Neptune retrograde. Um, if you're inspired to write a book of poetry um, and you think yeah, this is going to make me you know, some resources, some money, some um, bring me some success, um, trust that flow that's leading you down that path even if there's some vagueness about what it's going to lead to or what it's going to manifest for you in your life because Neptune wants to infiltrate your life with creativity and inspiration here in the house of resources. Just as an aside, my Aquarius friends, it might be a really good idea while Neptune is retrograde to have um, like a picture of a dolphin or a shell, seashell from the ocean, um, maybe a, a painting of the ocean or something um, around you or in your, you know, main work area or living area or something like that to help balance this energy uh, of Neptune retrograde materially in your life over the next um yeah, over the next five months and that can bring more harmony and balance to your resources and your material status and situation. So my beautiful friends, that, that's, um, that's all I wanted to mention about this. But I do want to say before I go that the Royal Stars Academy uh, is offering one more week where you can get $100 off enrollment in the introductory level or the intermediate level or both if you want to. Um, it's a great opportunity to learn astrology. So many people say, leave comments on my YouTube videos and say, oh, I learn all I need to or f free videos online. I don't need to go and pay for an astrology course. Well, I'm sorry if that's the case for you. You're really only getting the tip of the iceberg. You're really learning the Dr. Seuss level of astrology when really there is available to you Shakespearean level astrology out there through many mentors and courses and teachers that are available to you the Royal Stars Academy is just one so why not make the most of this discount and come and learn Shakespearean level astrology with me at the Royal Stars Academy and my Aquarius friends don't forget to visit my Patreon family this week because I have a video all about the fabulous full moon in Capricorn trining Jupiter and how it's going to affect you at a personal level. Thank you my dearly beloved friends. It is wonderful to share the astro weather report with you and I look forward to joining you again next week for more astral energies and how they're playing out in our lives. I'll catch you then.